Oh, hello, and welcome to another episode of Rahula Stapa with me, Richard Herring. It's lovely here at the Leicester Square Theatre at the moment. Uh, the guest this week is Emily Atank. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you like these shows, hey, you can come and probably see one live. We're touring the country in uh, 2019 and probably beyond that. Uh, we're also here at the Leicester Square Theatre. Go to richterring.com slash gigs to find out all about that. And hey, why not support us by becoming a monthly badger? Go to our brand new website, rahalastapa.co.uk. Uh, you'll find lots of stuff about the show, but also there's a lovely paywall you can get behind very cheaply and see all those behind the scenes videos. There's hundreds of those now. They're all about five minutes long. Or oh, lots of other extras, plus some of my stand-up shows. There's going to be lots of stuff there. Maybe I'll do some question and answer sessions. Who knows what I'm going to do back there? Only people who are paying. That's the people who know. Uh, that will help us to fund the filming of this show, which is exorbitantly expensive. Thank you very much for watching. Let's sit back and enjoy Richard Herring's LSTP. Rahela <laughs> Stipper. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who has just sold one of his livers for Jesus. <laughs> Not feeling that well, actually. It's Richard Harry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Oh, you're, you're much better than last week's audience. There was a bald guy in the front row last week. He didn't crack a smile, mate. Uh, so, um... <laughs> He was good, John Ronson was good, wasn't he? Obsessed with, obsessed with porn he is. I don't know. Didn't do it as well as I did in the... The timing was all off. So, um... Welcome to Richard Herring's Long Sally Tall podcast. That's a terrible name. I was hanging around with the goodies the other week. I don't know if you remember the goodies. They would drive a Trandom. Who remembers the goodies? Eating Spangles. They call it Rehalistopus, so that is, uh, that's, uh, that's going to catch on. Um, let's see what I've got for you. Oh, no, I should have said last week, and I'm sure you'll have noticed the difference between the two weeks already here. I'm on a diet this, this year. I've, uh, I've already, yeah, I've, I've, I said I look thinner than last week. You were here last week, weren't you? And it's a lot, I've lost a lot of weight. I did a poo in the interval. And it's, um, I, was, I was kind of hoping to, because they used to alternate between fat, rich, and thin, rich presenting these shows, which gave me half the... The workload, obviously, it's a two different people, as many of you know I am. Uh, but it's Fat Rich has been presenting this show for quite a few series now. In fact, looking back at the John Ronson when I was thin rich when I last did John Ronson, that was the last time I was probably thin. Uh, that's how long ago it was. Uh, so uh, my plan is to, by the end of the series, thin rich will be presenting the series and I will wear the suit that I wore in 2015. Not going to happen. Is I've lost... Um, I've lost... Uh, 10 pounds so far in 2019. I was very fat. It's, I was just drinking a lot of beer for some reason. So I, it's, um, <laughs> but it's been a dry January and a dry four days of February. 35 days. No, I'm not counting. So um, we'll see if that comes to pass. And some of you have looked at the last episode already and said, haha, you idiot. It did not work. <laughs> It didn't work. I'm cross. I, um, I've got a new car. I was mentioning this before uh, to the audience. And I live in the countryside now. So it's very... And it's been an unpleasant weather. So dirt gets splashed all over the car all the time. There's no point in washing the car because you'll just go out again and it'll get dirty again. And I was in Waitrose Car Park in Hitchin. It's usually... It's not like and That place is full of cunts. But it's, uh, Hitchin's usually all right. Yeah, it's usually all right. Hertfordshire-based comedy. There's just people in Hertfordshire going fucking mad for this shit. <laughs> And uh, I did see my car sticking. As I walked into it, I said, I said to my daughter, you can see which one our car is, because it was quite dirty. And I was getting... I had two kids. I was on my own. I was tired. I was putting them in the car. I was trying to feed my son at the same time. I was very harassed. And a man, a kind of middle-aged hitching man, came past. He said, excuse me. And I'm a polite man. I thought he maybe recognised me from my Radio 4 work. And, <laughs> and <laughs> he said... How's anyone meant to read that number place? <laughs> I said, I've been thinking the same thing. And I, would, I wasn't angry with him to begin with. And then I thought, that what kind of... That's a, quite a lot of front, isn't it? To basically go, your car's fucking dirty, mate. What are you going to do about it? 
punch you in the face, you fucking old fuck. I'm very, I'm very cross today. I'm very cross. As last weekend today, very cross. So, um, just, I mean, that's it. I think as you get older, I'm worried about it because I think as you get, he's about, I know he's probably my age, to be honest, but he looked to me, he's, might have been in his 60s. And you go, what point does that mental filter go where you don't think, maybe I won't just say every single fucking thing that's gone into my head. I mean, you know, this is my job, but I don't do it in real life. So, anyway, uh, our guest this week uh, is probably best known for portraying Slimer in the Keith and Paddy picture show, which is my favourite television program. <laughs> so, and we can imagine how hideous this guest is going to be. He plays, out of all the acts in the world, were chosen to play Slimer, which isn't even a human being. So let's see what she looks like. Will you please welcome the amazing Emily A. Tack, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Welcome. Sit down. Pick up a microphone. I should have said that. You have to talk into that microphone. Like... This is very strange for me, this yeah. kind of scenario. You're going to have to get used to it if you're going on a stand-up tour. You're going to use a handheld mic on stand-up? No, I've got oh. one of those little things. You've got a Madonna mic. Yeah, I feel like Ariana Grande when I wear yeah, it. Yeah, that's nice. We had those. The Lee, we had Lee and Herring. When we did Lee and Herring, we had those pretentious mics. And then I, I thought, like oh, come on, you've got to you'd be real, talk into a big phallic microphone. I think you feel like, you know you've made it if you get to sort of do that <laughs> with your ear. Like, yeah. We, I used to do, uh, which will be, I know maybe it might work. I used to do, I used to do, pretend I was uh, Captain Scarlet and go, zzz, zzz, that was my joke with it. Uh, so, <laughs> less cool than you. <laughs> Not Ariane Grande. Uh, anyway, so Slimer. How did you get cho chosen to portray Slimer? That well, is not fair. I can't, but th this is hilarious. I can't believe that this is even a thing. Um, I, if Lee said to me, Lee Francis, Keith Lemon, he said... Um, what is not his, what is not his real name, oh, Keith Lemon? Do you know, the, the amount of people that go, so, right, okay, is Keith, like, is that who he is? Or is, <laughs> no, no, he's Lee Francis, Keith Lemon is the character. And they go, all right, so he's Keith. No, 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 he's Lee. That Keith Lemon is his character. Anyway, yeah. I have to explain that to people all the time. It's hilarious. So um, yeah, he said to me, uh, "No one will play Slimer. I don't, you know, I don't know who to ask." I'm like, "I'll do it. I'll definitely do it." And he was like, "I thought you'd be all like dead vain, though, not want to like dress all green and shit." <laughs> no, fine. Absolutely what do you fine. have to do to be Slimer? Just literally do this. You are good. Uh, it's, uh, you're, better, you're better than I thought you'd be. I've never even seen Ghostbusters. <laughs> I was weirdly really good at it. That was, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much what he does. So, uh, it's fine, thanks. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so, well, we have seen you recently. We'll talk about... I mean, yeah, there's, so, there's a lot of things to talk about, um, but we'll talk about I'm a Celebrity first, which my audience don't watch, because they... Uh, I they, was going to uh, say... Don't, they don't watch I'd... it. I knew you they would. don't watch it, but this no, this series was apparently a really good one. It was a very good series. Apparently, it was the best. They're aware of what it is, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't watch it. Highest <laughs> rated series, apparently. If you. You came. Spoiler alert for anyone who's got it on series record. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> anyone who's waiting a couple of years just to really savour. You came second. I came second. To, to a football manager. Was hoping for an applause, but don't worry. Yeah, second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> how how was it? Because I mean, I mean you must, you've been asked all these the questions about I'm a celebrity, whether it's real, whether it's. But was it is it an enjoyable thing to do? Really, I mean, you seem to have fun this year. Yeah, do you know, I wouldn't. You can't really say enjoyable in the, the sense of the day to day life of it. You know, you're starving, hungry. There aren't takeaway pizzas coming in. You know, every half an hour, like everyone thinks there is. It's not a studio. It really is what it seems on television it's very difficult but it's more about kind of what you how you kind of do that i'm not going to use the word journey but i feel like i'm about <laughs> to say it i'm really sorry you did feel like you did have oh, a bit of a journey oh, in this oh, there's the, it's the only way to describe it it's more about that experience experience we'll use yeah. that word it's the experience and it that's that's the enjoyment of it that that's you find out so much about yourself um, things that you didn't know and yeah it's kind of well yeah. you seem to I mean the, ev what everyone sort of says about you in this series is that you went in you had a, your confidence a bit dented before you went in yeah. through relationships and whatever yeah and I, that this I, kind of rebuilt you a bit Would that be it, to... oh god it really did I, yeah. I genuinely I said this yesterday I actually really miss being in there because there was something about being in that environment where you're so completely stripped bare of of 
the stresses of everyday life and you're taken away from the real world. And I can honestly say it was the most liberating thing ever because I just felt so protected in there. I felt like I, I was the happiest I've ever been because there was, I, I didn't have the everyday normal stresses of everyday life. Sure. I could just... I just didn't have to worry about anything um, apart from, you know, having to light a fire and, you know... Stay win, alive. Yes, stay yeah, alive. <laughs> win stars yes. um, for camp to, to get meals. Everything, you go back to basics and as a, as, a, as a human being in this day and age, if you ever get the opportunity to do anything like that, which, you know... Not everyone gets to do the jungle. You but can just go and go in a wood somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just starve yourself in a wood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't take your phone with you. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. um, it's a big, it's a big decision, right, to go in to make that. Were mm. you nervous about it? I mean, that you weighing it up. Um, some yeah. people go into these things and it destroys them. Yeah. And destroys their career. Mm. Usually, the racist ones, to be fair. So as long as you're <laughs> confident, you can keep your racism bottled up for two weeks. <laughs> It's I had okay. a real word with myself. <laughs> no, yeah, that was it. I just kind of thought, well, do you know what? I'm, I'm not racist. <laughs> um, I'm not nasty. I'm not bitchy, and I'm, I'm just not a dickhead. I just yeah. know I'm not that much of a bell end that I would <laughs> make myself look like a bell end. And, and I remember saying to ITV when I had the meeting, I said oh, you know, oh, I don't look like a dick and blah, blah, blah. And they said, thing is, you're only going to look like a dick if you are a dick. Yeah. Uh, it's not Big Brother where they're out, you know, they're out to literally bleed you dry for that kind of thing. It's, it, it, it's not really like that. And I just thought, I, I, I but said But they no. wouldn't tell you if you were a dick because well, they want you to go on if you are a dick. <laughs> yeah, That's well, the exactly, problem. yeah. They go, you're well. not a dick, it's fine, you'll be <laughs> yeah. fine. Go on in, Noel Edmonds, it's fine, you're not a dick. <laughs> Everyone loves oh. you. No. Did you ever wake up and find Noel Edmonds just sort of staring at you, standing over, <laughs> standing over you, staring at you? Does no, that ever happen? Do you know, I've got to defend him here. I feel really bad for him. I, after watching it back, I feel he did... It, he, he's such a nice guy, and we had so... What do you mean? <laughs> do you hate him? Oh, you know, I've got a grudging oh. respect for, his, for the murders he committed, but oh. it's, uh, you know, it's apart from that... Oh, no, sorry, no, I'm thinking of... Um, uh, Jack the Ripper. I, I got him confused. I got him confused. That wasn't him. I got confused. I think we covered Ben, right? Uh, so, no, I, well, I think he's, he's, he's done some slightly dickish things. We Has have this. We've discussed. Well, he had this sort of cancer machine that he was telling cancer sufferers they should buck up their ideas and try his cancer machine. It's like, he's done odd things. I didn't hear about the cancer machine. No, we don't, you know, he probably didn't, doesn't brag about it. Oh. <laughs> You're right. As long as you haven't got cancer, he won't tell you about it. But if you've got it, you ain't sharp about the thing. <laughs> um, I, you know, he's. I, I just think it's a, a lot of people who work in show business think they're cool and not dickish people, mm. uh, and there is no hiding place in the jungle no. for that. The, you know, literally, if yeah. you are a dick, it's going to come out. So, yeah. um, I think Noel Edmonds for me feels like the kind of person who thinks he isn't a dick. Oh. Incorrectly. <laughs> That's just my opinion. And I'm sure he, he feels the same lovely. about me. He was me. lovely to me. He I wouldn't go in there because, you know, my, I, I've got an angry side. I think people... people were, I bottle it up. Are <laughs> you <vicious. laughs> um, But you, you know, it seemed to... It was a year where there wasn't many... Everyone seemed to get on and it wasn't, oh, there was no... Oh, no, genuinely, we, got, we, we really, really got on. Um, yeah. And I always say, I don't think I would have done half as well in there if there was an arsehole in there that was upsetting me. I think in that kind of environment, it either brings out the best in you or the worst in you. Um, and luckily, it brought out this side to me I didn't kind of really know that I had. Because there's no booze in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it... <laughs> that sounds awful, but there's no booze. There's none of those kind of things that change your personality at all. So you're... It's almost like you're a nine-year-old kid again. And just with genuine happiness the, the, the slightest thing will make you happy if you win a chocolate biscuit you know <laughs> you're so thrilled it's the only thing you're, you're going to eat all day but you're so happy about it you become a nine-year-old again okay so i loved it i loved and, it and yeah it's, did you anticipate coming out and you know what, what was your feelings as you're coming out of the jungle you think it's going to do you aware it was going to lead to lots of opportunities or you're worried you'd been do you know, different ways? i think as as an actress an actor we have to say now um i think it's the decision that you make with something like that. It's a really big one because, it, as you say, it can go one way or the other. And in this industry, 
I feel like the industry is changing a lot, and it got to the point. I've, I've been asked to do the jungle for the last three years, and I was kind of I was battling with it. I was thinking, oh, I don't don't know if it's the right thing, but you know, I'm fucking skint, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I I got to a point where I thought, right, I'm not trying to be the next Kira Knightley. That's not what I'm trying to be. Yet I also I'm not a reality star, so I had to kind of think, well. If I do this, I have to sort of afterwards carve my own path afterwards. I don't want to do that thing of, oh, God, it sounds so indulgent, kind of going, oh, yeah. It's such weird decisions you have to make in this kind of industry. But you never kind of know what the best thing to do next is in, no. in the industry, especially as a young woman. It's really, really difficult. And I'd, my whole, uh, over the last 10, 11 years, I'd been, you know, playing these glamorous kind of <laughs> roles. Great fun, great. Um, but yeah, I got to a point where I thought, right, I'm, I'm tired of that robotic motion thing of going to auditions, castings, reading the lines, doing that. My mum calls it the revolving door audition. When you go in, you go, hey, right, thank you, back out again, <laughs> and you just never hear anything again. And I just, I lost my sense of fun with it, and I just thought I need some excitement again in my life, and I wanna just kind of flip everything on its head. Um, and just see what happens if I start saying yes to things like the jungle. Yeah. Um, and so I just thought, right, sod it. Oh, I'm going to say yes. Uh, and just kind of see what happens from there. Thank Christ I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was the best decision I've ever made. And it, I, I, didn't, I didn't know for one minute um, or guess just how kind of well it was going to go. I'm so lucky um, that the people that I w was in there with, they were all amazing. And as I say, you know, we all brought that out the best in each other. And I came out and I've got all these incredible opportunities and all the doors that I thought were going to be shut in my face in terms of acting and things like that. They're bloody more open than ever. Hooray. Now they all want to know. <laughs> so that's <laughs> how you audition is you go in a jungle for three weeks and, and well, show people I, you're a nice but person. What I think, but what I think it shows is that the industry is changing because a few years ago that would have been, the, the snobbery would yeah. have been, you yeah. know, well, oh, she's done the jungle. We're not going to see her for this casting now. We're not, oh no, you can't do a drama now. You can't do that. But it's it, it's just not the case for some reason. This Good. What's year. the what have you? Are you allowed to talk about the things you've been offered? I know some of them are semi secret or <laughs> rumors. I've got, I've got my agent in the audience. I don't know yeah. what I'm allowed to say. I got the Walkers gig. With I've Gary seen Linegar. that. So you got Walkers crisps. <laughs> Do you get free crisps for life off of just that? Just get to eat crisps with Gary Lineker. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but I, well, I've, I've just been confirmed for an acting gig the other day um, that I'm so excited about. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it yet, but um, it was something that I definitely I would have auditioned for before, and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have got a look in. The feedback was when I went for castings. God, this is so indulgent. Sorry, it's like a therapy <laughs> session. Um, the the feedback I got was that I was either too sort of well-known for roles or not well-known enough. So I just sort of thought, well, I might as well choose something a bit more extreme and then just see what happens from that. So, yeah. And, yeah, it's it's all good. It's all you great. put it from a big showbiz family. I know your mum a little bit, yeah. Kate Robbins. Yeah. Did you, um, were you aware she was in the Eurovision Song Contest? You must be. Yes. Can you sing the song she sang? No, I have no song? idea how it's happened. Where, I, where do, they called, I know it went. Were they called Prima Donna? Prima Donna. Can you sing? I think if... Um, I've, I've learned their name in case it ever comes up on Pointless because I think I don't think anyone remembers Prima Donna or this song. All right, if hey. there's a place in your heart for me, then there's a room in my place for you. Cause I've got love enough. Oh, love enough. Yeah, I've got love enough. And they're all kind of wearing Bucks Fizz style. I don't know if it was the year after Bucks Fizz, yeah. but the boys are wearing that kind of, you know, children's presenter kind of Bucks Fizz stuff. I remember mum always gets a bit narky if you say Bucks Fizz. She says, don't mention that around me. <laughs> They're on, she's big. I think she might have done two Eurovision Song Contests. Am I right about that? She was no, I don't know. She's, uh, she wrote Surprise Surprise. I mean, yeah, I should have, thinking surprise. about it, I should have got her and I love her I stuff. Know what you did. <laughs> surprise, surprise, she wrote. Surprise, I can sing her. I bet she no. had a number two hit. I yeah. don't know what I'm doing sitting yeah. here. <laughs> she did voice on spitting image. She did Euro Trash as well. Euro Trash. Yeah. That was always weird watching that with my mates. Everyone would be like, did you watch Euro Trash last night? No, because it's my mum going, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> She's a cracker. You come from a family of like seemingly about a billion very attractive women, 
and Ted Robbins. <laughs> that, is, that seems to be... He got all... He got a lot of the, the excess... <laughs> Left over. <laughs> How is Ted? Is he is he is he okay? He's he is... well. He, he's over the heart attack is and he, all is yeah. well. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we no, love Ted. We love yeah, Ted we... Robbins. Uh, but um, Paul McCartney is. What, I'm trying to work out what relation okay, Paul McCartney so is to you. He's my grandma's first cousin, okay. and and he yeah my grandma essentially raised him. His mum died when he was very young, Sorry, so yeah. um, my grandma raised him, and they actually started um, the Beatles in my grandparents' garage, right? Um, and then they. Yeah, they started, but it was it was Paul and John. They started. They called themselves the Nurk Twins. They were like okay. this, yeah, this little duo. And my grandparents owned a pub, and they said, "Oh, you know." And my grandma introduced Paul to the ukulele and taught him how to play it. And she said, um, "Oh, you know, you sound really good. You should play um, play at the pub tonight." So the Nurk Twins started playing at the pub, and then yeah, the, they did right. They did okay. They did all right. I mean, my mum just goes around saying, you know, yeah. Paul just brags about being my cousin, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Does Paul pop around to see you in he, the house? You no, know, he, he's a family man, and I yeah. grew up... He was such a massive part of my childhood. Um, yeah, I, I had an amazing childhood with him. It, he was so lovely. Him and Linda, they would um, have us round for Sunday lunches. and yeah. Vegetarian, though. Yeah. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> I remember turning up once and he said, Oh, you've just missed Michael Jackson. He was, I was like, Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Normal Sunday lunch. It's amazing. So, there is always, I mean, is anyone in your family not a performer? I don't, uh, no. No. I, I, I don't think any single one of us has ever had a proper job. I mean, it's like a massive dynasty. I mean, yeah. like Robert Dawes, who I work with, is married yeah. to your aunt. Is yes, that, yeah? Amy, yeah. 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 And you're, there's a big age gap in that for the family. You're, you're, uh, Ted is the oldest, is he? The, yes, yeah. it goes t uh, Ted, my mum, then Emma, Jane, Amy. Um, wow, they yeah. were going some, yeah. your grandparents. Yeah. Oh, that. <laughs> Oh. It's good when no one comes like 12 or 13 years after us. That's impressive. Yeah, I mean, they're dead now, so that's weird to think about. Okay, well, you don't have to think about them dead. <laughs> I was thinking about them having sex while they were alive and vivid and still young enough to procreate. That's what I'm going home to think of. That's my... Uh, if I get a porn video made, that is what it's going to... That's what it's going to... What? Oh, God. <laughs> they're all siblings. It works for me. Uh, so... <laughs> It's a back reference to last week, in case you think I'm weird. <laughs> um, so, we'll give my best to your mum. Uh, she's, I will, yeah. uh, I want to say, uh, she uh, direct messaged me on Twitter and said, can I have a couple of comps to your gig tonight? And I said, yeah, sure, and then she didn't turn up. But I don't hold any grudges. Uh, so it's... No, I'll tell you who is here, though, what? and I've got to say this. So my sister, yeah. who's also my agent, wow. um, she is here with her boyfriend, who their first ever date, they've been together for seven years, it's not interesting for anyone else, <laughs> but they've been together for seven years, and their first ever date was to a Richard Herring gig. That happens a lot. Yeah, and they're here now. And they, they, so they went to a Richard Herring gig, it was when they first like fell in oh. love, and then they had a Domino's pizza in, in his car afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah. Is that a, is that a euphemism? I work out what that would be. It sounds pretty good. Extra large. But yeah, they're here tonight. Yeah, so yeah. that happens a lot because I think uh, you know, people come on the first date, the women see me and go, "Fuck, I could end up like someone like that." I'm just the nearest available person. Oh my god, he looks a bit like you. Does Not he? Even kidding. Yeah, a little bit. I could have been in. I could have been in the dynasty. Oh. You got to audition first. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in the in between, as we talked to some of the in between, I talked to some of the, uh, I talked to Joe and uh, Damon, Damon at the uh, Bristol Slapstick Festival recently. So that was that was was that your first big break, the in between us? Oh yeah, completely. I I was um I was seventeen and I my parents had divorced and I looked at my sister and I said, right, should we just sack this off and get out of it because this is rubbish. So. We moved into this flat and we had no money. I was 17, my sister was 15, 16. And she was like, how are we gonna pay for it? I was like, I'm gonna become a famous actress, it's fine. Um, and I banged a few doors down and I auditioned for this thing called Baggy Trousers. Oh, yes. Um, and I auditioned for that. And I also at the time auditioned for something called Coming of Age, which was on BBC Three. And I, I was offered both roles and I had to choose between 
the, the you both made the them. right choice yeah <laughs> well <laughs> but I, but what I did was I went back to my flat that day my grotty little flat you know I was only a, I was a baby I was 17 and all my mates were sitting around just like smoking drinking whatever and I was like right everyone read both of these scripts and tell me what's the funniest one. And they went, that one, baggy trousers. So I was like, right, I'll say yes to that one then. Thank Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and so I got that and I, and I did that for three years. Um, yeah, till I, till I was 21 and that just changed my life forever. And what were the boys in it? Were they like the characters? Jane? Well, the weird thing was, what people don't really know is that at the time they they were so much older than what they were playing. Yeah. So I was 17, like the normal age, and but I was playing a year older than them, Whereas, they, but they, in real life, were like approaching 30. Wow. Yeah. They were in the makeup truck every day, like shaving their chests <laughs> to every inch of their life, like scraping their chests and their faces. Because, they, yeah, they were like approaching 30. So yeah. they were, they were, they were silly and fun and everything, but, you know, they were, Bit mature. Were they a bit mature? No. Nah. Nah. It's a great <laughs> series. I was, cause I, was talk, I was talking about with Damon who created it, but it, it, with, with Ian. Yeah. Um, but it's it is that it was exactly certainly a boy's memory of school. Of the, all the boys were silly idiots, and all the girls were quite cool and together. Which I think is true of sort of sixth form, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's definitely my kind of memory of school. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the sort of comments I get, and I have to go. Thank you. Our um, you know, oh yeah, but the thing is, though, reason why you're so good in that is because I just remember I fancy girls like you, you know, with the tits and the end. I'm like, thank you, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> um, yeah, but apparently, yeah, people it resonated with people, and people were just, oh, you know, everyone knows a guy like that. Everyone knows a guy like that. Everyone knew the girl like that. You know, mm -hmm. that's why people like. Why it. didn't you get invited to the in between us ten year anniversary? <laughs> I Disaster. knew that was what happened? what happened? Should we have an emergency question? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> oh, um, okay. How do I? Oof. There's going to be some tricky ones in there. Yeah, okay. You could just be honest. You said you're a very open, honest person. Okay, so okay. Be very honest. Okay. <laughs> um, I think sometimes in the industry, as things progress and things happen and people move on and um, certain people then kind of go <laughs> oh fucking <laughs> which one of them's the dick no it isn't <laughs> oh god I'm this close yeah. <laughs> well it's no. not Joe Thomas because he's lovely oh no Joe, Tho Joe so Thomas is I'm love. gonna do oh no! <laughs> no 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 Simon um, Bird seems very no. nice. <laughs> so I know Simon Bird is lovely. <laughs> Bird is lovely. You were in uh, Dad's Arm with the tall Oh, one. thank God we've moved on. Brilliant. <laughs> so it must be the other yeah. one. Uh, so. No. no. <laughs> it didn't go very well, so it was a good job you weren't there, isn't it? Well, well <laughs> it was lovely to hear how, you know, people saying, oh, you know, you should have been there. It, it yeah. was very nice. It was very nice to hear that. Um, yeah. Well, it was, I mean, I think it was, you know, those, the four main guys obviously were the show, but it was, the, what was beautiful about that show, I think, was the peripheral characters. Like, the truth of it was great. Mm. But also, you know, Greg Davies was fantastic. Yes. And, and, you know, and all the other students really... They were the paedophile teacher, which I auditioned for and didn't get. It's the first time I've, first time I've ever auditioned for a pervert and not been accepted for the, for the... So were you not invited to the actual night? Because I think every uh, other fucker was, apart from me. <laughs> what did you do to them? You must have scarred no, those. No, no, no. You're so nice. So snobbery, was... I think, in certain areas. <laughs> we'll come back to it. So um, have, a bit, have a bit more vodka. <laughs> we can get you some more. Um, right, this is a new emergency question, uh, and I, I, I didn't get an answer from Satnam Sangeri, so I'm going to try you. What is the weirdest reason you ever skived off school? I'll give you an example. Someone who answered this on Twitter for me uh, said, Brian Jacks out of judo, ju judo was visiting, and I didn't want to meet him. <laughs> uh, I, I once skived off school because I was... I, they were, and I don't know why they announced it. And this is the second time I'm telling the story. Uh, but they were going, we were going to make tea and coffee in home economics. I was about 10 years old. And I was terrified that it would make me drink tea, tea or coffee. 
And so I pretended I was ill and didn't go into school. <laughs> did you ever skive off for a, a stupid reason? Oh, God. Did you ever no. skive off? Yes. I'm guessing you yes. did skive off sometimes. I was very naughty, very naughty at school. I was a nice person. I wasn't mean or anything like that, but I just... School, I just looked at it as a waste of time. I mm. knew what I wanted to do, and I couldn't wait to get out of there. I, I, I hated it. hated school. Um, the... <sighs> God, this is going to make me get the violins out. But there was a... I was, I was quite bullied at school. I was very badly bullied. And there was this one time where this, this horrible little shit in my class had printed out this picture of me. And I'd, I'd, it, 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 we, it was part of, like, um, an art class that we had to take really silly pictures of each other, uh, pulling a silly face, and I sure. pulled a really stupid face. And he printed off about, I'm not joking, about a thousand copies of this photo of me like. <laughs> and he posted it everywhere. And I'm oh. talking like in every single village, you can imagine, with my phone number on it saying, call this number for sex. <laughs> I swear to God. And so oh, it was dear. the most, it was awful. Yeah. And so I just didn't, I knew that that was all going on. And I didn't go into school that day because I was so humiliated. Wow, that is... That's not that's that's, horrible, isn't it? It's not like my whimsical story about tea and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Apart no, from that's, that, that's I no just... no Brian I'm... Jacks, is it? <laughs> Was it Brian Jacks who did that to you? Uh, I just used to know. go to McDonald's all the other times oh. on the train. That's yeah. just so, like, it's so typically a teenage boy to say, you know, to mm. bring this number for sex. It's yeah. just so <laughs> not understanding even how... I got, all the, I got so many phone calls as did well. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> 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 I'd be, I'd be really annoyed if I didn't. <laughs> you were pulling a funny face, though, so, you know, that's, that's a good sign. Um, what is the best thing... Here's a new emergency question. This might elicit even more sympathy. What is the best thing you've ever lost and then found again? Oh. Ooh. Hard, that one. My dignity. <laughs> you sure you found it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, best thing I've lost and found again. Um, okay, right, so when I was really, really young, um, I had these, I called them my special dollies, and I had all these dolls, like these babies, they were my babies, God, they were my girls, like they were my life. Um, I think I was about 22, no, um, I was, uh, I don't know, must have been about seven, six or seven, and I had these special dollies, and I had them in this massive, like, satchel thing, and we went on holiday, and oh, bless my dad. I'd left them. I, we'd got on the plane, and I'd realised I'd left this huge bag of dollies in, like, KFC or something oh. in, the, in the thing. We, you wouldn't be able to do this now. My dad, he was like, right, no, got off the plane, managed to go all the way back through security, found my satchel of special dollies and brought them back to me. Oh. I know. Oh. No idea where they are now. <laughs> Left them on holiday. Yeah. I was trying to get rid of them, Dad. <laughs> so, look, you're doing a stand-up tour. Like, yeah. This is quite a bold departure, well, can, I would can say. Can everyone stop saying that? They're making me You know, stand-up's really, really hard. You have oh. to be really good. To, uh, to be the kind of stand-up who can bring two disparate people together in love, that you have to be pretty amazing. Oh. Um, so... <laughs> I mean, you've performed all your life, so it's, and you've obviously do lots of impressions, and you're, I'm assuming, a good singer. Uh, yeah, I sing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's not like a massive leap, but was that that was a decision you made before the jungle? Yeah, yeah. I, it was just that thing of going. I wanted to. I was so sick of um, kind of you know auditioning for things and not getting them, and everything was just going at a really placid rate. So I was like, right, all the people out there that are doing really well, the people that are writing their own stuff. So people going, why don't you write a sitcom? Too much work, too much money. Um, and I thought, well, if I just write a show, that might be a laugh. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just kind of... I'm going through this phase at the moment in life where I'm thinking, right, everything's really scary, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Yeah. Um, it's essentially just me... It's, it's called Talk 30 to me. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's about, you know, the... It's a kind of a, a humorous look, hopefully, at... Um, the panics of approaching 30. I'm 29. I've just turned 29. And I can't believe it. I yeah. can't believe I'm that's 30 so, this year. That's really old. Well, <laughs> but the, 
funny thing is, I saw your DVD and it yeah. was, um, oh, Frig, I'm 50. Yeah. I nearly called mine, oh, fuck, I'm 30. Well, there you go. I've already done, oh, fuck, I'm so I did, oh, but fuck, I'm 40. I didn't do a 30 I didn't show. Know that. So we can but we can combine. You can we can now put that as a yeah. thirty forty because I didn't do the thirty. Yeah, show. well, it's that whole thing, isn't it? I, I feel like in life we're taught about puberty and how difficult that's going to be. Fine, we're we're sort of you know we're told about the menopause and or a midlife crisis that you're probably going to get later down the line. But this part of of life, no one really teaches you about. No, it's it's all of it's almost like you still feel like you're eighteen years old, and yet. People are going, right, you've got to be a grown-up now. You've got to now pay bills on time. You've got to dr learn how to drive. Can't drive. Um, you've got to stop dropping things and stop being an absolute moron. <laughs> and I just don't know how to do that. Well, it's true, but I feel the same, and I'm 50. <laughs> yeah. What, 50? I, I know, 52. you make me feel a bit better. You make me feel uh, a bit so better. you can carry on. Uh, yeah. I think 30 was the worst for what decade for me. Like for, so like 40 was I did have a kind of break breakdown at 40, but it wasn't as bad as 30. I was genuinely really mm. really unhappy about. Yeah. It does feel like a big deal because I think like all the way through your 20s, but you know no offence, but you're a fucking idiot when you're yeah. in your 20s. Yeah. So uh, it's you know, it's it all gets better. Does but, it? Uh, yeah, well, I was, a really, I was a real idiot in my 20s. So it's, it's <laughs> you know, the minute I turned 30, it wasn't a problem. Whereas the minute I turned 40, it was still a problem. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, when I turned 30, I went, oh, it's fine. But uh, the build up to it was, mm. was really awful because it is sort of leaving. Do that. you remember, do you remember, what were you doing at 30? Um, like, do, do you was, remember what you did for yeah. your 30th birthday or anything? I, mean, I went to Goblins in Ballam, where we used to, which is a little wine bar, right. which we used to go to a lot and had a party in there. Two of my friends met at that party. I'm very good at bringing people together, and yeah, I was always just alone. Um, oh, I forgot I'm married, aren't I? Yeah, shit. Uh, I'm married, I've got two kids, I'm fine. Uh, but yeah, two of my friends got together at that party and uh, are still together. So they've been married for 22 years nearly. Uh, been together 22 years. Uh, yeah, so we had, a, you know, we had a big thing, and yeah, it was, it was 97. So it was a beautiful time, I was on TV still. <laughs> So, you, well, okay, but you, you were but doing great at 30. I then. was, and then it all went wrong, and now look at me 20 no. years later. Look at me now, I'm just talking to... You didn't even win, I'm a celebrity. Talking to the runner-up of I'm a celeb. <laughs> Tried to get Harry out red nap, he was no way. Fuck off. Uh, no, it's good. I think life gets... The older you get, the life gets better to, uh, up to an extent, and then yeah. starts, things start dropping off. Well, mine are already dropping off. <laughs> like, mine are already dropping oh. off. <laughs> oh, <God>. um, <laughs> oh, dear. Um, well, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. So, what have you? Have you haven't. You said you haven't written the show yet. You start in April. All right, you've don't sold, tell everyone. You've sold every ticket. Yes. Is that true? Yes. I've, it's, Got an it's, extra show. Is that sold uh, out yes. as well? Yeah. Uh, nearly. Mm. Nearly. Twenty second of oh no you won't care <laughs> you definitely won't care. <laughs> they would love to. Um, Twenty <laughs> um, second of May we've added another Clapham date. Due to popular demand, brilliant. Haven't written it yet, so. But no, I have. I've written like the first half an hour, but I know what the premise is and I know what I want it to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 very it's very scary for me. It's very daunting. But I'm I kind of talk about that in the show as well. I want people to feel like they're just sort of sat with. We're just sat in a living room chatting, and I've got like a drinks cabinet behind me and things like that. And I think if you're selling out, it's a lot easier. You know, I think the thing is when you start yeah. doing stand-up comedy, if you're starting and playing to five or six people, that's yeah. really difficult. Yeah, you've got people who want to see you. Yeah, so it's going to be fine. Yeah, maybe For the first five minutes, and then you're really going to have to start delivering. Yeah. Or they're going to they're going to ask. <laughs> But I'm panicking, I'm panicking. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm panicking because I've got all these lovely young girls tweeting yeah. me going, oh, I'm so happy my mum's just put the tickets to come and see you. I'm like, you look 12, this is not for you. It's, <laughs> it's not. Fun. They, they, like, the teenagers have the best sense of humour and they know all this stuff. They know mm. everything. We were talking to John Ronson last week. They know everything. Yeah. They know things you even you could never have dreamt of. <laughs> and... Uh, even though you're young as well, I mean, that's, I'm not saying you were a, you were a ten year old <laughs> sex addict. <laughs> that's how that came out. Even you, with your reputation, even you as a ten year old didn't know these things. That wasn't what I meant. So I'm glad I clarified that, or it, it could have seen. <laughs> but people have talked about you, but that's that's not the reason. I said. But they know because they, they've seen everything. They know everything. <laughs> 
It's easy doing comedy, just be rude for ages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you got half an hour? Then just swear at people. That's my yeah. that's my advice. Um, it, but, yeah, but swearing but kids, I think, have the best. The, you know, when you're a teenager and that kind of age, mm. you've got you know there isn't much else in your life, and like music or comedy or whatever is the most important thing, and you study it, and you mm. you know you really know what's good. Yeah, I think, and so I think teenage. I was a you know I was into comedy when I was. At 10, 11, I was mm. watching or listening to Derek and Clive, which was incredibly inappropriate. Um, so, you know, it's fine. Mm. You won't be as bad as Derek. You won't be as rude as Derek and Clive. But I, I, that's the thing. I, I, want, I want sort of young girls or, like, people who wouldn't really think about going to a comedy gig or to the theatre. I want to kind of create something that, that those people who think, oh, I'm not posh enough for the theatre. <laughs> I want them to come and enjoy sure. my show and just have a hoot. Yeah. yeah, and you, you know, I think the the celebrity thing showed you're a great role model. All the, all oh. the, but you are, you know, you're a regular person, and Thanks. you were happy with not having makeup on and things like that. And yeah. I think that's that's a, yeah, that's a great. Oh God, it. yeah. And this it, in this day and age, um, yeah, with social media and things like that, I feel like it's um, there's so much pressure on on young people. Without getting too political, there's so much pressure on young people to to look a certain way and be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, and I think not everybody gets to experience something like the jungle, you know, being on television and things like that, where all of a sudden you are in the public eye and you do have, you have a voice. And it is important sometimes to, to speak for, for other people that don't necessarily, that might not have that voice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And it's really fun when you got because the little kids always seem to sit in the front row, and then you can just go, "You're going to learn some stuff tonight," and then just be much ruder than you're yeah. going to be. And it's, mate, honestly, everyone loves it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, for how, like how old? How, how, how old are you? Twelve? <laughs> That's a bit fucking young, isn't it? <laughs> so you know, for a nation that says they love kids, people, you know, don't they like to see them humiliated? <laughs> <laughs> when you were five years old, you fell over at the ballet. Just want to bring. You know I just that? want to bring that up. I know everything about you. I do a lot of research. That's mental. How do you know? I know that's, everything. No, that's weird. Where have I spoken about that? If you've said it, I know it. Oh that's my god! <laughs> yeah, it was like the most traumatizing. Have you got? Have you got an Alexa in your house? That's how I know. <laughs> uh, that's so strange. Yeah, it was the most one of the most traumatizing things ever, and I don't think I've ever been the same since. No, you told was, the loose women about it. When oh you've been right, in, you've been on da dancing and ice. Ah, oh, that'll do it. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think I was younger, like four or five, and, yeah, and I, I came out, I was, um, I had my tutu on, like, getting really ready, getting prepped, and I came out, all the parents were watching, and I came out, did my bit, and I went arse over tit oh. on my face, flat on my face, and I'll never forget the sound of that, that hitting the floor, and all the parents going, ooh. <laughs> it was awful. Don't worry, it'll be exactly like when you start your tour. Uh, so, <laughs> you'll hear it again. You can hear that noise. Cheers, mate. The show you haven't written. Oh, no. You're gonna be fine. Uh, you met uh, you met Bross recently. Oh my god, Bross. Oh my right, okay, so the Bross documentary, if you've seen the Bross documentary, the best thing since the office. Are we it, it's the best thing in the world. And I met them and I couldn't believe it. They wear a full face of foundation, like stunning double wear Yves Saint Laurent, mm -hmm. like proper, and bright blue lenses and thick black mascara. Fit. <laughs> <laughs> Fancied them both. Yeah, I was yeah. at school with Bross. Were you? Yeah, it's no. going to come every time we talk about Bross. It was mentioned in the last <laughs> podcast that you were on at. Um, yeah, no, for a year they came to live in Cheddar and were, were, fell in school. Uh, I discussed this with my last guest in Wolverhampton, though, that, but that one of them doesn't look very much like the other. Well, they both don't look like the other one, but they're... <laughs> yeah, it's true, actually. <laughs> they're twins. Yeah. How do you account for that? How do you account for Matt still having loads of hair and not loads of a sort of skull face like the other one's got? <laughs> And they are nice. They're nice boys. They voice. smelt very nice. I as bet well. they did. And the, do you know that documentary though? That I loved that documentary because okay, <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah. And you know, yeah. But 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 it it actually 
it broke my heart as well. Yeah. Like it, it really did. And you know, you get to know people like that. And yes, it, it's it's that thing, isn't it, of of watching characters like the David Brents of the world. And you know, we even though we kind of go at things that they say, you still want them to win in the end. There's something yeah. so lovable about people like that. And I think that's what I think that's what they had. Whoever directed that is a genius. He is a genius. Genius. And I do know who it is. He tw I, I tweeted us. I love. I've watched it twice. Mm. I bought oh, the yeah, me too. I bought the Blu-ray so I could watch the extras. They're not. <laughs> as, it's not worth it. Uh, they're not. They're fine, but they're not. There aren't enough of them. It should be like another hour right. of stuff. Um, and yeah, he tweeted me and thanked me, and he was, he, it is brilliantly put together. But I mean, it fell in. I think it fell into his lap a oh. little bit. Imagine, um, imagine filming that, yeah. going, oh my god, oh my god, this is, oh my god, it's perfect, oh my god, it's perfect. But I think you know, but it's it's a real, there's a drama to it. It's a, it's an amazing mm. thing because it's much more than the comedy of it. Completely. But but also, it's about it's it's what we're talking about. It's about mm. fame and the fickle nature yeah. of fame and the way those guys were chewed up and spat out. And yeah. That's the, that's the danger. Not, I mean, I think you come from such a, a showbiz and stable background mm. with showbiz that I'm sure you're, you know, you'll be inured to any of this kind of stuff. But it's that way that you, they were risen up as, you know, same mm. age as you, mm. young young mm. performers. And then, I mean, it's weird they sort of sabotaged it himself. Yeah, but uh, the but skull faced one. To, to <laughs> <laughs> he messed up. But to watch people like that, to watch which someone... one do you like best out of the two of them when you oh. watch? Which one did were you identify? As, in, as in... when were you watching it? Which one did you feel sorry for? Which one did you identify with? Well, because oh. it for me. I watched it twice. Uh, yeah. Literally changed between the two. Right. Okay. First time. I yes. Like, oh my god. First, first time, time you think that's a bit of a dickhead, <laughs> yeah. and then the second time you go, actually, I see what Luke's on about. Yeah. I'm more on his side. Yeah. You. Changed. I was the other way around. I know. I, liked, I, I thought Luke was oh, half really? done by to begin with, and I thought, no, nah, he's a prick. <laughs> Matt's Matt's worked hard his whole life. This yeah. guy's turning up. He hasn't. Really. He could, well, he should have turned up and go, look, I haven't drummed for 25 years. Way. Give me a break. I'm not going to be very good, right? Mm. But he turned up like, um. Can I just say that this should go like this? Going to the other musicians, oh, I'd like to try and be a bit better at being musicians. <laughs> be a bit more like Flea from the Chili's, you know. You know. I've got my band t shirt to prove that I'm a real musician, because that's what. I've got all different ones every day to prove that I'm a musician, because I know some bands. Um, I love them both. I love them. I would love to have you as guests on the podcast, guys. <laughs> We can talk about Fairlands Middle School, Conkers. We, could, we were allowed to play Conkers at Fairlands Middle School. I'd have bought my dartboard if I'd known. I could have had my dartboard. I'd have given it them. They're actually really talented musicians they as are, well, which fine. I didn't know. You sort of look at those, that 80s cheesiness a bit and you, yeah. uh, and you kind of go, oh, yeah, whatever. But actually, when you watch them, for, they're, they're talented musicians. Mm. Um, yeah. The music is really bad. I it's just genuinely bad. It's genuinely no. bad music. It's, it's no. If there's a place in your heart for me, it's not as good as that. And why is that? But where's when a prima donna getting back together? I think a couple of them are dead. So uh, let's um, <laughs> let's. Uh, they should still do it. <laughs> um, you were presented Blue Peter. Yes, I did. I know everything about you. I don't know how I got that gig with my filthy mouth. Um, yeah, presented. It was it was the first time I've ever hosted something and hosted something live. Yeah, it was great. Who are your Blue Peter team from childhood that you remember? Most um, Connie with? Huck. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there was the other guy. What? Who, what's the guy's name? Simon something. Who now is a sports presenter? Simon. Um, he's like he's like fit. Yeah. Simon yes. Thomas. Simon Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember he. I remember watching uh, his audition process to get in the Blue Peter oh, okay. gig. It was like a really big deal. After school, we were like racing to get back to see who got the Blue <laughs> Peter gig, and he got it. I remember having a crush on him for a very long time. But yeah, that's, okay. that's all I remember. Yeah. Mine's Valerie Singleton, <laughs> Peter Purvis, and John Noakes. That is my. I don't remember, know who do they remember are. Them? I don't know. And Shep was there only Petra taught free to the tortoise. I don't know who Christopher they are. Trace, is that his name? What's that? Anyway, I don't remember him. Uh, uh, William, Hart, women, William Hartnell was in it. <laughs> Patrick don't McGowan know. was in it, do you remember him? No. I'm so old. <laughs> Connie Huck. Yeah. She tried to kill me on a boat, Kent Connie Huck. She steered a boat into me and tried to kill me. No. Yeah. That's not something Connie Huck would do. She's evil. <laughs> she, she, she looked nice on Blue Peter. 
Oh, R- Richard Bacon, remember old Richard Bacon having um, to resign because of his... Remember that? Yeah, you want, were you yeah. shocked by that or you thought he, he's a good guy? Not shocked. Okay. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. I don't really remember that. No, really. No. Okay. I'm a bit. I'm. I'm when quite Richard, young. Yeah, when I'm Richard younger. Bacon was ill last year. Yes. Were you hoping he would die? <laughs> <laughs> no. I was that's what I heard. I saw him walking down that's the what, street. That's what James Buckley told me about you. <laughs> You saw Richard Bacon walking down the yeah, street? Yeah, I saw him walking down the street. I was yeah. like, I thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he died. No, he got better. Oh, it, was, it was touch and go. Oh. <laughs> he's been on this. He's been on this. Oh, has he? Yeah, he was good. Oh. I was kind of hoping he'd die. <laughs> so nasty. He can't well, say And then like people that. would have gone back and watched the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice thing. It's like a little tribute, isn't it, to people, this podcast? When you die, people will watch this. Go, I mean, you need to take this off man? me ASAP. Who's that man from the 21st century? Um. <laughs> I can just feel like my agent's ass cheeks clenching more and more as this goes on. Sorry. Sorry, I knew you would get that. <laughs> so you're, like, you're going to do the celebrity juice job as well? Give me that exclusive. This isn't going out for a okay. month, so you can tell me. So, no. Oh. I, I, the, as far as I know, somebody has already been put in place and they were put in place a long time ago. Okay, who was it? Um, I can't tell you. Okay. But um, I, there's a very big chance that I'll be, you know, I'll be on there a lot. Oh, I'll be the Rufus Hound of Celebrity Juice. <laughs> 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 Sitting on the side. Um, yeah, no, I, I love I love all those people and um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll always go on Celebrity Juice. I love okay. it. But no, uh, as far as I know, I don't have that gig. Still free crisps. <laughs> free cr- many, many crisps you can eat. Yeah, they're kicking themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you can take them in. I mean, I can t- I'll do the catering. It's all fun. Um, uh, Victoria Wood. Did you work with Victoria Wood? You're on a Victoria Woods. Yeah, so my, yeah, my mum and her were, were very good friends. They worked together for years. And um, yeah, I, I got a little role with her. Um, uh, oh, God, what was it called? Lark Rise to. Cranchesterford, though, they changed it. Okay. Yeah, it was like a spoof of, of Light Rise to Candleford. I don't, yeah. I don't know. You know more than me. I don't really oh, know. Oh, no, no. Um, yeah, no, yeah. It worked. Yeah, it was, it was great. How yeah. was that? It was, was great. She, she, was, she, was she kind to you? Yeah. Good. She's yeah. Nice. She was a nice lady. Yeah, I mean, I've known her my whole life. Do you know, my earliest memory of her, I went to a Steps concert, um, and it was me and Mum. God, I sound so fucking middle class, don't I? <laughs> I went to a Steps gig with Victoria Wood. Um, That's what and we Julie do. Walters. That's middle class. Just <laughs> 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 but like, with it was me, Mum, Victoria Woods, and Julie Walters. My God, um, Julie I know. Walters. What see. Sorry. How did, how did uh, Victoria and Ju- Julie? <laughs> did they enjoy the Steps concert? Very much? I don't know I what. I, I can't that. believe they even sat through it. And it was for. It was for me, Martha, and George, my brother and sister, and Victoria's kids, um, and. I don't know why Julia Walters was there, to be honest. But yeah, so we all went to this Steps gig um, and then Dawn French and Lenny Henry came over and they, we were all like chatting, chatting. And I was like, Mom, like, I was like, I just want to meet H from Steps. Like, I don't give a shit about this. I want to meet H. Everyone was crowding around Victoria and yeah. my mum and everyone. I was like, can I just meet H from Steps? Yeah, that's all I wanted to do. Um, and yeah, I got to meet H. Great choice. So I, was too, I was too shy to talk to Victoria with the one time I met her at Buckingham Palace. Yeah, I go, that is better than a fucking steps gig, isn't it? With Steve, Stephen Hawkins was there. They're not all dead, the people who were there. Uh, Greg, da- Greg Davis was there as well. He's, someone check on Greg Davis. <laughs> Windsor Davis has died, hasn't he? That's uh, good news for Matthew Crosby's wife. So that's um, Who's for long term fans, don't worry. Who's that? Windsor Davis. Who's Come on. Oh. <laughs> How could you not know about. The, the racist sitcom work of Winston. <laughs> Shut up. Um, that's what he said. Um, <laughs> I had a great question for you. It was, it was brilliant. I'll ask, I'm going to ask you something else from here uh, while I get back to my brilliant question that I had. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> Thank you. I'll talk more about the Steps um, gig if you want. Uh, Don't worry about it. 
If for your money, which STD would win in a World Cup of Sexually Transmitted Diseases? Sorry, say, say that. Say that for your one. money, yeah. which STD, Sexually Transmitted Disease, yeah. you know what it means, would win in a World Cup? <laughs> what the fuck sexually, does that mean? You're a woman of the world. You know what STD stands for. Uh, sexually Transmitted Diseases. What would, what's the best one in your The best opinion? one? Yeah. I think chlamydia is the most glamorous one, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I went it? for chlamydia. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've had chlamydia. Well, you don't want to say warts or herpes no. or anything that you can imagine. No. But chlamydia, you can't really imagine because there are no symptoms. I said chlamydia is the one I've had the most <laughs> and is also an excellent name for a posh woman in a poor quality student review <laughs> sketch. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, that's just the one that came up. Oh, no. What are we going to do? <laughs> What's he done? I've knocked my water over. It's oh. all right. It's, not, it's no falling it's on right. your face when you're five years old at the ballet. Come on, let's face it. So, Yeah, chlam chlamydia is the most glamorous one, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah. A lot of them are like, oh, look at this. This is going to reach out and touch. You, your chlamydia would you is be like upset? dribbling over It to is me. like a metaphor. This would you be your... upset if you were electrocuted to death during this <laughs> podcast? <laughs> We'd still put it out as a tribute and also because it would get a lot of hits. It would get a lot. If you die, <laughs> if I die, there's no good to anyone. This is as dangerous as anything you experienced in the jungle. Oh, you've been saved by a table leg. It's acted as a dam. Oh, no, but uh, oh, no. the water is gathering as it does in a pool. It really is gathering. It is. The, the stage is sloped like that. We well, might all be now. about to fall into some kind of sinkhole. We're already quite low underground. Stop trying to get me in a sinkhole. <laughs> 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 so, well, let's. What's what's coming up? You, there's some film stuff, and yeah, oh, is there, I, there's some stuff you've done, isn't there? There's some stuff you've actually. There's on IMDb that's coming up. So there's some stuff. Yeah. You've been in a film, and this was a while ago. You were in a film with, um, have my forgotten who it was. It was with <laughs> Harvey so Keitel. Like yeah, just another film Come that on. nobody saw. Oh, this no, but this was the whole thing. This was the whole reason why I kind of changed things up because it's 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 really interesting. You you know you audition for these films that people go right. This is going to be the one that's going to yeah, it's going to change your life. It's going to be great. You're working with all these amazing people, um, which is great. And then you do it, and it's great fun. You meet these incredible people, people that you've always wanted to meet. Um, and work with, and then you put it on your CV, and then no fucker watches it. <laughs> so, it, it, but it, it was fascinating because what I realized doing these films, it, I've done, I think, like 13 films now, and I think only one of them has actually been watched. I did a Disney film last year with Jennifer Saunders, and I did the Dad's Army movie Dad's with Army. Bill Nye, Kevin Jones. Is that the one that Jones. got watched? No, exactly. No. No. <laughs> no one cares. And but then I put a video up pissed in my mate's living room of me doing Love Island impressions and five million people watched it and liked it. I was like, right, I've got to change it up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so it it was really interesting because it just kind of made me think, well, yeah, in in this day and age you, you've got to just Put yourself out there a bit more. But it's like, you know, a lot of these things. I mean, I've been in films that I've, you know, and not very many, uh, maybe two, but that never even came out. Yeah. So, you know, you've done. You've, <laughs> don't think because of me. Well. I'm almost married. You were the star of Almost Married. Yes. Well, see, that gets played on ITV too. Oh, does which, it? Yeah, which that's it's probably. Is the, that the best one? Yeah, that's probably the best one. Probably. Let's see who's seen, who's seen Almost oh, Married. I don't. That's, well, my sister. Hi. Your agent hasn't even seen this film. <laughs> so it's on ITV2. I'm, I'm going to watch it's it. A, well, no, it's one of those films that, you know, when you're, um, you're away and you you can't get to sleep and it's midnight and it's on, yeah. that kind of thing. And that yeah. might be just in your head, just playing. It's about a man who gets an STD when he's about to get married. Yeah, he gets chlamydia, funny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he gets chlamydia. Let's yeah. all rent it. After, I just want to, like, see how this podcast works. If we can make things spike... Then people, like, people will come on. If we all go and rent almost, let's all go and buy the DVD of Almost Married. I don't even know. No, if not there just is a you DVD. in the room, everyone at home, buy it this, the week this comes out. It's actually quite let's good. Let's send it to the top of the charts. I'm sensational it in it. I'm sure you so. are. I'm sure you are. <laughs> 
But there's more to come. There's fantastic <laughs> stuff to come up. The yes. th- and really good luck with the stand-up tour. Stand-up's really easy, honestly. You're going to be fantastic. Don't. It's really... I'm not even kidding. It's really easy. All it is is about confidence, and you've got the absolute confidence to do it. You'll be brilliant. Thank you. It's going to be fantastic. If there are any tickets left, go and see them. Put some more... Will dates you come in. and see it? Of course will I will. Will you actually? No. <laughs> Cheers, no, mate. All no. the best. I live in Hertfordshire, and um, are you from Hitchin? I live. I live near Hitchin. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I kind of. I swear. I you were born in up. Luton. Yeah. So well, well not. Don't just say Luton. Where like, were you born? I was Luton, but yeah. I no. I did. I, I was born in the L and um, but I was I was raised near Hitchin, in Be- like Bedford kind oh, of. Oh yeah, I know yeah. Bedford. That's uh, Al Murray's territory. But Al mm. Murray went to school in Bedford. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. Hitchin. I remember making many mistakes in Hitchin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old heart. I think. The, do you remember the pub? Oh, I don't know. No. Um, I, but I have no. only lived there for a little while. All oh, right, sure. Yeah, so your, <laughs> your, the stories of your childhood there have not permeated yeah. through to <laughs> my village yet. But I'm sure it's only it'll only be a short amount of time. There's enough gossip going on. Yeah. In that town. Um, it's been really lovely to speak to you. Good luck with everything. Thanks so much Thank for you. coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, Emily Ayton! Thanks awesome. so much. Thank I'll you. be at the back bit. I'll see you there. Thanks so much. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>